Hi there and welcome to this video where I test yet another high performing trading algorithm. This time it's a mouthful because it is the combined Binage and Cluck V8 Hyper trading algorithm. And I can already tell you that 90% of the 50 pairs I tested on respond very well to this trading algo. As with many trading algorithms that I currently test out on their merits, this one is also findable on GitHub. If you search for the name of the strategy, you will find multiple repositories that contain the original code. Now there are also many variations to find of this algorithm. And in this video I will concentrate uh, only on the one that has the best setup for my specific backtesting. And as you already know, it is the hyper version. So let's open the code and see what's inside. Now, according to the text in the code, this algo is inspired by the combined bit H and clock strategy made by Iterative. So if you like this algorithm, the original author deserves all the credits. I'm just the guy that tests this out on his specific setup and show you my results on the YouTube. The combined bin H and Cluck version I tested out a little while ago and it currently sits just about the middle of my current strategy league. But let's first talk about uh, something that I thought was a coding error at first. At the start here of the code, after the SSL indicator has been defined, you will see the strategy class. And at the very start of this class, the author has defined the following settings for ROI and stop loss. Also, the trading stop loss has been set to false here. However, if you scroll a little bit further down, there is a second set of settings that is used in this algo. And these settings effectively override the initial settings and therefore might confuse you if you use this algo on your own setup. But if you backtest this strategy, you can see in the logs of the output on the screen that these exact settings are used. So in the case of this strategy, it uses the multi time frame ROI, a stop loss of minus 27.4% and the configured trailing stop loss. Now besides this hyper opted results algo, I also will test the uh, strategy without the trading stop loss, no ROI and stop loss. So just the bare trading rules that were defined in the beginning of this file. These are the settings you can alter to determine if a setting should be taken into consideration when optimizing and strategy execution. And proceeding further down the code, the algo also makes use of a custom stop loss and a custom sell method. Now I think this is highly probable that the optimized settings for ROI and stop loss settings get in the way of these defined methods here. But since it is performing well, I will not complain about this. There is also use of informative pairs on the one hour time frame and some informative indicators also on the one hour time frame. And this is a method where the normal time frame indicators are defined, which will then be used in the populate indicators method. Now from that moment the buy trend signals are defined. And as you can see here, multiple sets of conditions uh, create multiple buy signals. Each one focused on specific circumstances where the author thinks that a buy can occur. For example, this buy condition in the strategy combines uh, multiple checks to determine an optimal buying point based on trends and volatility. It checks that the current price and the shorter EMA uh, are above the longer EMA on both the 5 minute and 1 hour time frames. Now the condition also ensures that the price is within a defined threshold from recent highs, indicating buying on dips within an upward trend. And it checks this with two rolling maxima over 2 and 12 periods. It also ensures that the price is below the lower Bollinger Band from the previous period and has decreased compared to the previous close. Now it also checks that the Bollinger Band delta and the close delta are significant relative to the current price. And finally it validates that the current volume is above zero to ensure that there is a trading activity and to support the buy signal. Now as for the sell signals, these are much simpler and that's what understandable because the main focus for the selling of open positions is focused on the defined custom stop loss, custom sell, ROI and stop loss settings. Next to this original strategy, I also did a test without the trading stop loss set and also with the ROI and stop loss disabled to see if this has effect on the probability of uh, good profitabilities. So let's get into the backtest results of this trading strategy. 
And here, as you can see, the performance of this strategy is pretty good on the five minute time frame. With the initial investment amount of 1000 USDT, it could get a hypothetical of 1304% gains with an average win of uh, 75% and a max drawdown of only 5%. The other thing that impresses me here is the high percentage of the pairs that respond well to the strategy. So in other words, this specific algo could be used on a large range of pairs. Now the equity curve of this optimized strategy looks very promising for future use and it's confirmed here that there were no high drawdowns. On average, there seemed to be only a drawdown of 1.3% with some outliers. Now as for the win rate and profit distribution, which tells a lot about the individual trades, the box plot on the left displays a median win rate of around 0.7%, so 70%, with an interquartile range uh, primarily between approximately 50 and 80%. And this indicates a relative consistent and high probability of winning trades. Now the outliers at the low end suggest that there may be some specific conditions where the strategy performs poorly. The box plot on the right shows a median weekly profit close to zero, but remains positive. It has a wide interquartile range that spans both losses and gains. And this suggests variability in weekly returns. The presence of these outliers with substantial profits indicate occasional large winning trades, while the bulk of the trading results are closer to the break even. Now these plots suggest that while the trading strategy often wins, the profit per trade might be not very high leading to a profit distribution that centers near break even with occasional large gains. But if you add all things up, then you can see here that the mean profit and loss curve overall stays positive over the duration of the backtest, resulting in the performance you saw a couple of slides ago. Now, how would the performance of this algo look like if I disabled all these optimized settings and kept it to the bare algorithm itself? And what do you know? This is a surprise. Without these optimized settings, the algo performs even better on almost all aspects in this table. Higher end results, higher win rate, higher pairs ratio, and uh, only the drawdown surface a little bit more, but uh, not too much. And the equity curve here is equally impressive, although not as smooth as the optimized version. And this results also in a slightly more jagged drawdown plot. But I do think this is very admirable to see such a good performance. Looking at the two box plots of the win rate and the profit distribution, these also show better results. So after all, in my specific case, optimization isn't that optimal and can even worsen the profitability of a strategy. And this is actually the reason why I keep optimization of strategies to a minimum lately. I also tested the code on a possible look ahead bias, but as far as the function to detect this bias could search for, it didn't find any. So with this check also out of the way, where do these optimized and non-optimized versions enter in my strategy leak? But first the following. I noticed that a lot of people watch my videos but still haven't subscribed yet. So if you do not want to miss out on any future video, then subscribe to this channel. And also, if you like these videos, then please give a thumbs up because that motivates me to make more of these videos and share this information with you. And I also would like to know if these results are similar to the ones you get on your setup. So please add these to the comments to let other people know that you verified these results. So where do these two versions end up in the strategy league? Now the original strategy enters in the league on the ninth spot. With these conclusions and findings, I'm at the end of this video. I hope you liked it. And if you also want to support me by being a patron, then follow this link and subscribe there too. You also will get the added benefit of accessing all the backtest files, results, strategies, the actual setup I use and much more. This is it for me now and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.